Hi, I'm Gary White for Central Kentucky Television. I'm here with Matthew Mattingly, who is going to be doing a program with us here on Central Kentucky Television, Central Kentucky Outdoors, and he is a bass fisherman. Yes, you can sir. see his rods that he's going to talk a little bit about here for us. But you've been doing some professional work too with the fishing, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I started like tournaments and stuff when I was 10, and just recently I started going into like the semi professional things like. Walmart has a tour, it's called the BFL, it's the Bass Fishing League, and it's kind of a step up, it's the semi-pro level, and then hopefully if I qualify, you go a little bit further than that into the FLW Tour. So Okay, fantastic. So we're going to get to learn a little bit about Matthew, and then he's going to tell us about the gear that he uses for fishing, and then over the next several months, we're going to be able to go out and kind of see some of the lakes. You're going to take us on a tour of some of the lakes around the communities, right? Yes, sir. There's plenty of little lakes around here, lots of opportunities for everybody to go fish. And they've got some big fish in them, so it's going to be fun. Great. All right. Well, tell us, first of all, you are a Marion County native, is that correct? Yes, sir. Born and raised in Gravel Switch, Kentucky. You know, got three stop signs, post office, and a general store. That's about it, so. <laughs> and some fishing. Good fishing? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, Actually, in Gravel Switch, we've got plenty of ponds, and we've got the Rolling Port River that goes behind mm. my house, so that's a good place to learn. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, so tell us how you first got involved in fishing. Um, i tell you what, the first time I ever went fishing that I can remember, we were in Loretto, Kentucky, and we were on my uncle's farm pond, and I can remember sitting over there playing and stuff like that, and my dad actually took me, and I was probably three or four years old, and the first fish I ever caught was a bluegill, and then the very next cast after that, I caught a bass, and I was just hooked after that. Okay. Just loved it. So you've been doing it for how many years then would that be? Ooh, I'm 22 years old, so... Almost 20 years? Yep. Yep, almost 20 years. Um, after that, when I said, you know, 10 years old, started fishing the local tournaments, you know, Shelton Young, the former chief mm -hmm. of police around here. Right. We started fishing the little local series. My first tournament ever was on a Springfield Reservoir in Springfield. Okay. Super. So um, I actually caught two or three fish that day. And, Right, because I beat my dad, so <laughs> this little competitive nature there. That's right, and he got you kind of started in the whole thing. Yeah, thing, yeah. Right? See, my dad, we, ne we never fished any tournaments. My dad wasn't a big fisherman or anything like that. And uh, he'll tell the story that there was one day I come home, and Shelton had an article in the paper, and they were talking about there was an open tournament, which mm -hmm. is anybody can go to it. You know, it's a $25 entry fee. And we went out there, and dad said, you know, you got to be a member to go. I was like, no, it says right here. You know, it's got to be, a, it's a open. Anybody can join. And uh, I just eventually bugged the crap out of him until he took me. So we went and then we just <laughs> enjoyed it after that and been rolling ever since. Okay. Now, we're actually recording today at the end of February. We were hoping to do some outdoor stuff, but it kind of got cold on us. Yeah. So with the weather the way it is now, are you doing any fishing yet or is it real, more in the warmer months? Well, I tell you what, I personally fish all year long, as okay. long as there's not ice. You know, I went in December, had to break some ice on Springfield, and I only live like 20, minutes, 20 30 minutes away from that, so that's one of my favorite little lakes. Um, but no, we're actually about to start up. I've got my first tournament this weekend, this Sunday, actually. Okay. But like I said, I fish all year round, as long as there's not ice on the water. Okay. So. Now, you said you have your first tournament. Tell us what your season's looking like for this year. Um, I'm actually fishing three different tours. I'm fishing, it's called an NTBA. It's just kind of like a, it's an amateur tournament series off of Green River Lake. And at the end of the year, you qualify to go to a uh, state, it's almost like a state championship on mm -hmm. Kentucky Lake down towards Paris, Tennessee. And then I'm also fishing the Walmart BFL series like I was talking about. And then, you know, Walmart puts that on. And it's like the semi-pro level, so I'm trying, trying to bump up a little bit. Okay. And then also, I'm the president of the Lindsey Wilson College bass fishing team, so I'm actually okay. fishing. It's the FLW College Series, which is where they take you know UK, Louisville, Eastern, all the big schools, and Lindsey Wilson. We all get to go fish. Our first tournament is on Table Rock Lake in uh, Kimberling, Missouri, and that's okay. a little three or four foot uh, tournament series. So. It's three different series and it's going to be a lot of fun, be really busy traveling across the yeah. country. So. Well, that'll be interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, you said that you go to school. Yes, sir. To Lindsay Full -time. Wilson, right? What are you going to school for? I'm actually a double major. I have a psychology degree. I'm going to have a psychology degree and a psychophysiology degree in May. Okay. Um, with that, I can go either into marketing or I could go into, like, I was looking at physical therapy at UK, so. Okay, super. So, do you think psychology helps you with your fishing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it really keeps you in a frame of mind, to be honest with you, when, uh, 
when you're in big tournaments and stuff and you lose a fish and you know the wheels kind of come off so to have that background on where you know hey you know stay in the game stay focused you know all that good stuff it really keeps the wheels on and keeps you focused so for those out there who don't fish uh, normally or competitively or what have you when you go to a tournament what exactly are you competing who are you competing with and what are you competing for what are you trying to do Okay. Get the most fish or the biggest fish? Well, actually, most tournaments, they have a, it's a five fish limit. You know, like, say we go to Green River Lake, the mm -hmm. size limit is 12 inches. You basically bring in your biggest five fish. You okay. weigh those. Whoever has the most weight at the end of the day wins. And okay. then a lot of tournaments have, like, side pots to where you put, every boat puts $10 in, biggest fish gets that money. So. Okay, so you're out there competing. You're trying to get the five largest fish. Yes, that sir. You can five find. largest fish you can catch, and okay. then at the end of the day, you win the prize money. So. Okay, and then during the day, does it have to be the first five fish you catch, no. or do you catch and throw back? You, uh, it's it's called culling. Like uh, if you get five little fish and you catch a bigger fish, you take your littlest fish out of the live well, put the big fish in. Okay. Return, return the littlest fish back. And usually at the end of the day, it's all catch and release. We don't take them home and eat them or anything like that. It's all catch and release, put everything back, keep the resources. So Okay, so while you're fishing, you actually catch them, put them into... A, it's a live well. Most boats have a live well. You know, you can take a cooler or anything like that, put an aerator in it. Aerator in it. But most of the time, it's two little hatches in the back of the boat. They've got what we call a bubble maker, you know, aerator, recirculators, stuff to keep the water, have oxygen in it. Okay. So the fish can live all day long. And then, you know, good lively for the way in. Plus, you get penalties if the fish is dead at the end of the day, too. So it's a oh, really? more, more of an incentive to keep them alive. Okay. So there's a lot of uh, variables to it, then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of things that can go right and a lot of things that can go wrong. Tell us what has been... What are some of the things that you've experienced in your, uh, that's gone right? Let's start with what's gone right for you when you've gone out there. What's been like, when you've gone out there and had the best fishing day, what would you say has gone right Ooh, um, in your tournaments? i tell you what, in uh, 2008, I just had turned 16. We were fishing, it was the Bass Club World Championship then. Mm -hmm. They don't have it anymore, they disbanded it because there wasn't enough participation but, I mean, there was teams from Italy, New Zealand, teams from everywhere. And we where went, was it? It was in, uh, it was at Fort Gibson Lake in Wagner, Oklahoma. It's about okay. 16 hours away from here, so it took a pretty good while to get there. <laughs> but what made it so memorable was that I think there was uh, 40 or 50 teams in the tournament, and we ended up getting third from Gravel Switch, you know, Braversville, Kentucky third in the Super. world so that's wow. that's that's one of the most awesome feelings in the world get a big old trophy get to get up on stage I actually been on espn for a little bit before so that's a big thing yeah. being 16 years old so that's absolutely that's probably my most memorable moment so what kind of monies were involved with something like that first place for that tournament was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. well that's, that's some nice money but uh second place i think was i think it was twenty five thousand dollars and then we ended up with around 3,500 or 4,000. Like they just kind of stair step down. So a big yeah. incentive to get first, but you still get money if you get second and third. So. Yeah, still made the trip worthwhile. Right? Oh yeah, and, you know, pay for the trip, hotel, gas, food, everything That's else. Just blast to go out there for a week. 